Dr. Robert Murphy is a professor of infectious diseases at Northwest University Feinberg School of Medicine. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. We talked about the numbers going down, but uh, there seems to be a, a plateau, and the previous plateau sort of preceded uh, another spike. Are we, are we getting ready to see that? Yes. Yes, we are, Larry. Uh, the evidence is already there. So a week week and a half ago, the numbers uh, stopped decreasing and they plateaued off, as you said, still like some 50,000 cases per day in the country. Uh, but a little bit more disturbing, we've got 14 states reporting an increase in new cases of 10% approximately. Uh, Michigan, 50% increase, what's going on there? Uh, and all this is due to a couple things. The variant, B117 from the UK is taking over, that's easier to transmit. Spring break, you got people moving around again. So you have more air travel, more young people out spreading around the country. Uh, that does it too. And also a uh, pretty dramatic decrease in the mitigations, uh, basically around the entire United States because the numbers were coming down. So you put all that in a bundle, you're gonna have another spike. So they're expanding all the vaccinations. They say one in eight Americans have at least one dose. How close are we to this herd human immunity that you talk about and when is, think, when are we gonna see things pretty much back to normal? Go. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's the space between vaccines and, uh, uh, and, the, and the virus, you know. And, um, you know, only one in eight, I mean, that's, that's great, but you know we need the other seven out of eight uh, vaccinated. We've got to get up somewhere in the, we don't know the number yet, but somewhere in the 70 to 90% range uh, to get herd immunity. So we have a little ways to go. Things are going better. I mean, more vaccinations per day, I think in Illinois, there was 102,000 vaccinations uh, yesterday. I mean, this is going in the right direction. It just takes a couple more months. So we hope we don't get too big of a spike uh, from what we just talked about. Are the vaccines helping treat long haulers? Am I understanding that correctly? Because we think of vaccines as preventing, but is it treating long haulers? Yeah, that uh, it's a very interesting finding. Uh, very small studies uh, and some anecdotal reports, but some people are tempor temporarily, you know, they're relating it to getting the vaccine specifically like Wow, four days after I had the vaccine, all of a sudden I have all this energy and you know I, I feel much better. Uh, so you can't ignore all that in the, in the smaller studies uh, put it together. Uh, it's a very good sign. Nobody knows exactly why that's happening, but uh, hey, take the good uh, when you get it. All right, viewer questions now. Indiana is vaccinating ages 45 and up. Ohio will be vaccinating residents ages 40 and up starting Friday. Why do these other states seem so far ahead of Illinois in this process? Uh, they're not ahead of Illinois. They're actually behind Illinois. And that's because it's all about supply and demand. They don't have the demand. We have the demand. Illinois has the demand. Everybody, especially in Chicago, they re everybody wants a vaccine they can't get. The people are scrambling like mad. These other places, they don't have the demand and they're getting the allocation based on population. So the places where it's going down, it's kind of a, it, it, it's a, a and un, it's not a good figure, actually, because they don't have enough people to vaccinate, so they're opening ah. up sooner. All right, next question. The Archdiocese is allowing students to avoid quarantine before returning to in-person school if they had a negative COVID test 72 hours ahead of returning to Illinois. How is this safe since a student could get COVID in those 72 hours still in Florida or in the airports coming home? Wouldn't it be better to have the required COVID test in Illinois after the travel is complete? This person should be on the advisory panel for the Archdiocese of Chicago. <laughs> you know, this person is making more sense than the Archdiocese of Chicago policy. And I, I don't know. This is the whole problem in this country. Everybody makes up their own rules. So oh, I don't like that rule. I don't like this rule. I want the kids right back. So you let them go through a crowded airport, a full airplane come back. I mean, this doesn't really make any sense. All right, last question. Is it safe to go back to the gym after you've been vaccinated? Well, if you've been vaccinated, you have protection. However, you can, you know, the vaccination is not perfect. So, you know, you should try to mitigate somewhat there. If everybody in the gym, if there was like a class where you only had vaccinated only people, then you could do kind of whatever you want. Um, if nobody's vaccinated, it's a, it's a mess. So All right. the person's in the middle. Siren going by Dr. Murphy's office.
All right, Dr. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's an excellent story. It's all, all right. Uh, well, if you have a question for the doctor, go to our Morning News Facebook page, post it there. We'll talk to him again tomorrow. Yeah. Have a good day. All righty. I was watching to see if